Howdy Tinker Nerds! Today we're going to do a little web scrapity scraping. Web scraping is an automated method of collecting data from these guys. Um, these guys. Want information on weather? Scrape it. Sports? Scrape it. Movies? Scrape it. You get the idea. Scrape it. So let's jump on this ride and make a basic web scraping program using Python and a Raspberry Pi in 10 lines of code. Challenge accepted. So keep your hands and feet inside the moving vehicle until we come to a complete stop because it's Tinker Talk. If you want to keep those knowledge gears greased, please be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. So I mentioned in the intro that I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi, but you don't have to use a Raspberry Pi. So why am I going to do this? It's because the Pi operating system already has Python and a lot of the libraries that we're going to be using pre-installed. So it makes for a nice little self-contained programming environment. So if you don't want to use a Raspberry Pi or don't have one, that's fine. You're just going to have to download Python 3 on on the computer of your choice, along with whatever libraries we decide to use. So while we get set up to steal the internet's data, here's a little background on web scraping. The basics of web scraping dates way back to around the creation of the World Wide Web in 1989, because you can't scrape the web if there's no web to scrape from. So after he invented the web, the wonderful Tim Berners-Lee also created the first web browser that converted HTML code into a nice formatted hyperlink and media rich document. A couple years later in 93, the Wanderer program was created by Matthew Gray at MIT. The Wanderer was a program that would automatically index the web and gather information about each web page using the page's HTML metadata. Nowadays, this is known as crawling and it's how search engines find websites. Crawling is the predecessor for scraping, but it wasn't until a decade later in 04 that a Python library called Beautiful Soup appeared. It was an HTML parsing library that allowed Python to filter and gather any information from any web page and use it for whatever reason basically scraping. So thanks to beautiful soup, web scraping as we know it was born. Now stop here for a second. We have to answer an important question. Is web scraping illegal? Well, this can be kind of a gray area because some websites forbid it, some websites allow it, and some websites allow it with stipulations. So since I don't look good from behind bars, I'm gonna choose a website that allows web scraping, and that would be quotes.toscrape.com, a website that was made specifically to test scrapers. Now that that's determined, let's get to coding, yo. Here we go. On my Raspberry Pi, I'm going to go to the menu, select programming, and then open up Thonny, which is a nice little coding interface. And you can download it for any computer, or you could just use the coding interface of your choice. The first program that I'm going to write uses some libraries pre-installed on the Pi. So if you don't have a Raspberry Pi, you're going to have to pip install these libraries separately. Let's start by importing the libraries we need, which are beautiful soup from the BS4 library and requests. The next thing we're going to do is request our target website and store it as a variable. Then we can use beautiful soup to parse the website HTML and store it as a variable too. Now we can start scraping that HTML code for data. But what code should we be looking for? Well, looking at the data in this web page, it makes sense that we would want to scrape the quotes and the quote author. So what we need to do is tell beautiful soup what to scrape. And to do that, we have to see how these items are identified in HTML. So let's start with the quotes. Right click on the quotes and select inspect. What we're looking for here are these tags that are before and after the quote text. This is a span tag that has a class attribute of text. This is how the HTML identifies a quote, and each quote on it, the page is going to be identified the exact same way. Now if we right click on the author name and select inspect, the author name is identified by this small tag and has a class attribute of author. So using this information, let's hop back over to our code and let's start with the quotes. So this command is gonna go through the HTML and find all the quotes and save it as a list. For the author variable, let's find all the small tags with a class attribute of author. And this is gonna return all of the author names to the list. What we can do now is create a for loop to loop through each quote in the list and print out their text. And then we'll do the same thing for the author list. 
If we hit play at this point, it should return a list of quotes followed by the authors. Um, so it looks like on my program I have an outdated dependency error, but I'll update it later because it looks like the code still runs. But this isn't really the results that we're wanting. It's not the right format. It needs to be formatted as quotes followed by the author that gave it and not individual lists. So to do this, we're gonna need to combine the loops. And that we can do by using the zip function in our for loop like this, and then we can combine our loops and just delete the second one because we don't need it anymore. All right, let's give this another try, and boom, there it is. Your info is mine, toscrape.com. So now this data is yours and you can do with it whatever you want from within Python. One example is to save it as a CSV file that you can then open up in any Excel type program. So let's just do that. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to expand beyond our 10 lines of code a bit. All right, so first let's import another library called CSV. And then we'll create a variable that opens a new CSV file, and then we'll add another variable that writes to it. The first thing that we'll write to it is the header name for each column, like this. Then we can adjust our for loop to write a new row for each quote and author item as it loops through them. Lastly, we need to break out of our for loop and close the CSV file that we open. Now if we run this again, and if there are no errors, then we can look into the folder that our script is saved to, and you should see a new CSV file. Open it up and see if the data looks good. It does. Perfect. From here, there's thousands of different directions you could go. You could scrape movie info from IMDB, dates and definitions from Wikipedia, sports stats from your favorite sports website. The sky is figuratively the limit. Just make sure you're doing it responsibly and within the guidelines that the website is set for scraping so that you don't end up in trouble. Now there's one aspect of scraping that we didn't touch on in this beginner's tutorial and that is what if your data is behind a login, like on Facebook? Well we will take a look at that in my next video. How's that for a teaser? So stay tuned. You can click here to watch more videos like this and please remember to support me by sharing, liking, subscribing, or commenting. And until next time, keep tinkering.